it's like this little voice is whispering, mm. stop, enough. And if you go too far, it just says, yeah, see? Too much. I think of it as this very rare bird in the forest. And once you've heard it, the next time you'll be able to recognize it. When I'm finishing a painting, I'm listening for that. I didn't enjoy arts and crafts classes as a kid. It really got to the point where I didn't think I was a creative person because I was bored. I found it boring. Like, why are we doing this? Being given an assignment, whether that was make a self-portrait or make like an origami bird or whatever without an explanation as to like why it just did not work for me personally i think this is exactly why a lot of people end up getting stuck right and end up with the conclusion that they're not creative which was exactly the conclusion that i arrived at it wasn't until like late middle school high school probably that i stumbled upon the joys of making and sharing things what i realized was that was a process that could teach me a lot about myself, like on a spiritual level. And when I came to that realization, it really changed everything. Suddenly it made a lot of sense to make things. Suddenly it became like borderline one of the most important things to do. Art is fascinating to me. And one of the primary reasons why I wanted to make this podcast is to have the chance to talk to people about why they do what they do, why they make what they make, right? And the, the process, the behind the scenes that you don't see when you just see the final result. For me, all of the background stuff, all the things that happen that are invisible are really important in my life. It made all the difference between making things and not making things. And this is why I am so pleased to share with you my conversation with the American painter, Alex Hilkertz. Alex moved to Paris seven years ago and ended up becoming a full-time painter after a career as an illustrator and storyboarder in the film industry. We had a really philosophical conversation about creativity and the creative process that I really enjoyed. We touched on starting a career late, the difference between making physical and digital things, the value of working slowly, how to know when you're done. We even touched on our definitions of God at one point. I will leave a link to his Instagram uh, in the description. If you're interested in checking out his work, I highly recommend taking a look. And with all that being said, I hope you enjoy. Would you be cool to talk about age and the art world a little bit? Okay. You threw yourself into being like a full-time painter, you know, doing what you do now. As you said, some, somewhere around seven years ago, moving to Paris, right? Yeah, yeah. And before that, you had an entirely different career. Yes. Yeah, I, I had a whole... I mean, I worked in Hollywood for 25 years right. um, doing storyboards. And, and, and so do you feel in, in the art sense, in the art career side of things, that you were late or, you know, that you would have liked to have more time doing that? Because it seems like it's something that you really love doing. It is something I love. And I, I don't know, I... I try to be kind of zen about it and yeah. I, I am where I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do look at people younger than me or people who went to art school or people who started painting, yeah. you know, in their twenties or thirties or whatever. Um, and I think how much further along would I be right. now? Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I've, the experiences I have, absolutely feed into what I'm doing now. So I'm, I wouldn't give it up. So it's not a thought that haunts you. It's not a thought that haunts me. Uh, the, um, I do the going to art school thing is the thing that I think, God, I wonder, I wonder where I would be differently if I did that. But then I sort of quickly think, well, I don't know, maybe I, you, you would have gotten a bummer teacher, or, you know, so I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Yeah. Do you think it's because you just really like what you do now and that's enough? to keep you from getting like wallowing in whatever, what could have been or what would have been? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think I like, I like what I'm doing. I, it feels like a pretty organic evolution of, you know, what I enjoy sort of painting or exploring or how things are evolving. It, you know, it just feels like a very natural process. Yeah. So we've had a lot of, really interesting conversations about navigating the world of social media and art. And it, it, it feels like sometimes there's competing forces. Yeah. Right. And I'm curious, you know, you, you do amazing work. I, I really love what you do, <laughs> but you share it on social media, right? Mm -hmm. And there's 
all of those metrics attached, mm -hmm. the numbers and the engagement and whatnot, how much are you thinking about when you, when you do work that you do? Oh, this, this is what, you know, this will do well, or this is what people are looking for. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I, do you, I, do you think about that? I do think about it because for me, I find it really hard not to think about it. You just, yeah. you kind of, you want to be this pure expressive person and not worry about how it's going to be received, but it, you, I can't help it. Right. right. You're, you want to be liked. You want people to respond to things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I do know I, 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 you feel yourself kind of fall into that trap a little bit. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to paint something that I know people will like, like what a horrible, like, that's not what I want to be doing. Yeah. That has, I've definitely done that. And I've, I feel myself kind of doing that every now and then. And I think, what am I doing? This, I'm not, I'm, it, it's not social media first. And then being a painter, it's like, I want to, I want to be a painter that happens to use social media. You know what I mean? So it's a totally, but it's a, that's a weird balance and it's a weird dynamic. It feels incredibly, incredibly way too easy to fall into that. Absolutely. And you see people that are like, okay, you know, they're playing those metrics games or whatever. I think it's, I think what we're witnessing right now, I don't want to say it's new because I actually think this is a dynamic that has existed for a very long time, but it seems like what you see on social media is this. And I, I see this from a different perspective because I know the behind the scenes, like I've done this, yeah, right? Yeah. There's this battle taking place where you want pure creation. You want to like, I think artists really care about this is my vision. I want to do it this right. way. And then there's all these other competing incentives that feel that, you know, they can derail you. Yeah. Like how much am I going to monetize this yeah. to fund future projects? Right. Yeah. Um, or, you know, how am I going to build my audience so that this can reach more people? And, I found that I'm constantly trying to find the right balance between like how strategic is this and how is this, how much is this just a, a pure expression of something I want to share? Yeah. You know? And how much of it is, is this sort of innate need to be liked or to be seen? Yeah. Right. That, Do you that, feel that's a motivator for you? Yeah. I mean, that taps into kind of deeper, yeah. like psychological desires or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a constant, it's sort of a constant struggle or a constant, it's, it's always in the back of your mind. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like I was, I've been pretty lucky that I, I would sort of sketch and paint and it evolved slowly yeah. and I would share things and people would respond positively. And it sort of, it grew very organically. I wasn't chasing numbers. I wasn't chasing things. Um, and it just unfolded in a pretty natural way. And so I, I, w I need to kind of keep that as yeah. like, remind myself, like, this is, this is how it's unfolding. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I mean, yeah, you can use social media to, to sort of leverage like, oh, I can get a bigger audience and that means I can get some sort of sponsorship with such and such, or I'll get invited to some exhibit or to some event or whatever. Yeah. Um, and those things happen, but I I don't want that to be kind of the motivating factor. Dude, <laughs> talking about it, I think helps a lot because I think everybody agrees with that. It's just this invisible thing that you can fall into. It, yeah. And it's sense. very, you just have to yeah. remind yourself, Oh wait, 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 wait. Maybe this isn't. Yeah. Cause I think when, I mean, I've had to, I'll, I'll, I'll put the blame on myself, <laughs> you know, in my own life, but like I've had to really juggle. Oh, that's a, that's a great, brand deal, you know, like that's yeah. a, that's a lot of, uh, money that I can use to hire people and help me do more cool stuff. Yeah. But then what happens, it's funny money for me, isn't like so important for the, the, the status or whatever that it brings for me, it represents freedom. You know, it's yeah. like, Oh, if I have money, I can just keep doing the creative things that I want to do for however long I want to do it. You yeah. know? Yeah. I, I always say that I made it um, when I was living in Mexico and for the first time in my life, I could justify just making my videos full time. Cause it was making enough money to break even. Yeah. Yeah. That was making it more than any other point in my life. I yeah. think no, you know, a million subscribers doesn't matter. Um, but the weird thing is 
you get in this loop where, you know, oh, I'll take on that brand deal and that'll give me the freedom to keep doing what I do and I'll you hire get, more you people. You get more freedom. <laughs> well, the thing is you hire people and then they're dependent on you. So you're like, well, I should get another brand deal. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, you know, that I'm spending all this money. Yep. I need to keep it going. Let's keep this consistent. And you're actually... Like you get lost in that. Yeah. Well, it's the golden cage, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you're yeah. chasing that and I mean, that's so seductive. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can get more freedom. I, if I did yeah. this, I'll, I would be a little bit more comfortable. Right. Um, so but, were you, were you making more um, money in your previous career, like in, more in the film industry before moving and following what seems like, it sounds like you enjoyed that job, but you yeah. enjoy what you do now more. I, I think that's true. I, yeah, I definitely made a lot more money okay. as a storyboard artist. Okay. Um, I mean, it, you get paid very well if you're working on big movies, you know, it's consistent work. It was, it's a great, it's a very comfortable living and it's fun and it's fulfilling work for okay. the most part. Um, now what I do is incredibly fulfilling in very different ways. Yeah. Um, and the money is there. There is money. I, yeah, I am earning money at it, but it's, you know, it's a lot less than what I was doing in LA, but, um, and does that bother you? Does that, do you think about that? I think about it, but, um, but I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of fortunate that, I, you know, I was, when I first started sketching and painting, kind of full time and, and really like, this is something I want to dive into and explore and, and express myself as at, you know, doing, um, I was very cautious to monetize it. I was very cautious yeah. to like, I don't want to immediately like have to sell these paintings yeah. or I have to start teaching workshops. Um, I was very, uh, reluctant to sort of introduce money into that whole equation. Um, because I know that uh, money can kill the spirit of things. Um, yeah. and so, I, you know, I was like, this feels, you know, I, I'm in this point in my life. Uh, I can, I can paint. This feels like kind of a personal expression and a personal exploration. Mm -hmm. And it felt at least at the beginning, it's, it's more robust now, but at, at least at the beginning, it was like, I have to be protective of this. I have to be, I have to treat this like a fragile thing. And if I just start being a capitalist about it, it's going to kill it. And, and I didn't want to do that. I knew that this was kind of a special, um, you know, like painting and expressing myself in this way could, could be kind of a lifelong pursuit. Yeah. And I didn't want to kill it in its infancy, infancy. Yeah. It, it, it is this really difficult thing to navigate because monetizing can also lead you to invest your time in projects that are adjacent to the original thing you want to do, sure. but aren't the same thing anymore. Sure. Right. Yeah. And we've, we've talked a little bit about that, but that, I think that's actually really good advice. Honestly, focus on the craft first. Well, I, yeah, I think, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, there's so many artists coming up or, or people who are interested in expressing yourself visually or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And um, whether it's just a hobby or whether you want to turn it into a profession, however far you want to go with it, but it, it sort of begins with like an interest and a passion and a curiosity. And there's something about that, that, mm -hmm. that is really pure and delicate. Um, and if you can hang on to that um, kind of notion, um, that can be a great seed that can grow into something. But mm -hmm. if you, if you sort of think, this has to be a business and I'm going to make greeting cards and I'm going to do, you know, whatever it is you're going to do to, mm -hmm. to start bringing in money to pay for this hobby. Then suddenly that kind of becomes too top heavy and weighty. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I, in my experience, did you have doubts about the ability to kind of launch yourself into a new career after doing what you did for as long as you did? I mean, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't think about it as launching into a new career. It wasn't, okay. it, it was like this very slow transition for me. And so it was sort of over the course of, I don't know, 
six months to a year. And suddenly I thought, Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I think I'm a painter in Paris. <laughs> it wasn't like a conscious decision. Like I'm going to put that story film storyboard behind me and I'm moving on. It was, um, I had, I had finished work on a really intense film project. Um, and my wife and I had already moved to Paris, uh, for the first few years of us being here, I would travel back to LA to work on films pretty regularly. So what I was, what were you doing when you were in Paris during that time? Recovering basically. It was like you oh, work wow. on a film for four months or whatever, really intensely. And then I would come to Paris for a few weeks. Wow. Um, and then, you know, the phone would ring and I'd, I'd rush back to LA. So it was a few years of that, three or four years of that. And it was, um, it was pretty rough. Um, but I, I come off of a particularly intense project and I came back to Paris. Um, and I just, I just wanted to draw slowly. I just wanted to, cause I'd been sort of drawing frantically doing storyboards on a film and it was, it's very creative, collaborative work but it's artistically, it's not very fulfilling because you're just, you're drawing so fast, mm -hmm. um, just to get the, wow. get the information down. Um, and so I wanted to, I, w I wanted to just take out my sketchbook and sit down and look at a beautiful Paris, you know, rooftop scene and just draw really slowly and, and concentrate on every detail and, you know, not have someone looking over my shoulder, have no deadline. And it, that for me was this real kind of click of a transition that was like, Oh, okay, I can do this. It was like meditation. Mm -hmm. I could slow down. Um, and that was, um, that was sort of this beginning of this idea that then, it, you know, I started to sketch more and more and, and then paint more and more. Um, so it was really, and then I, you know, I did other film projects. I did other commercial projects. So I, 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 and I still do. Um, so I kept kind of bouncing between both worlds, but the, the painting for me was very much a, like, let's slow down. Let's work with traditional materials, actual paper, um, you know, you know, physical, uh, materials, not drawing digitally or whatever. Um, so that was, uh, that was kind of the beginning and, and it, um, and it just evolved very slowly. And then, you know, after a while it was like, oh, this is starting to take off and people are starting to like what they see. And, um, and, you know, it was a while before I thought, oh, I guess my life took a left turn there that I wasn't expecting. Um, and, and, you know, suddenly now I'm a painter in Paris. I can say that. Um, but but it was a very slow transition, very, very gradual. Would you say that um, moving into painting represented a slowing down of not like your life, but like the way you approach work? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, in a creative sense. Yeah, definitely. Slowing down and also, um, yes, yeah, physically slowing down, like spending an hour or more in one place, like looking at a scene and, and painting or sketching it is, is like, I wouldn't do that in, in right. the film world. So you felt everything was rushed then in that dynamic? Well, it is rushed. I mean, you're there, you know, you, you do have, you have as much time as you have when you're working on a film. Um, if you, if you have to have a scene done by tomorrow, it's gonna, you're gonna get it done. Or if it's, if you've got till the end of the week, it's going to be kind of a different experience, but, um, and you can definitely be very creative in that and you can make some pretty pretty incredible images that are super fun, but you are, you do have to kind of draw fast. It's like, you got to be quick about it and efficient and clear. Yeah. Um, so did you have to unlearn that in a way Like, could you feel yourself moving quickly when you would yeah, do your yeah, first? Uh, yeah. And I still, um, you know, when I do demos or if I'm teaching a workshop now, I'll, when I, you know, I'll start with a pencil sketch and I can, I can tell people around me are just like, damn, that's fast. Cause I'll just, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. even okay. now. Yeah. Yeah. And I just feel like that's, that's this great training that I have. I can sort of jot something down really quickly. It's like the um, Picasso kind of, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm basically yeah. Picasso. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I guess he's the one that comes to mind as like, all right, blank canvas. I've done this 8 million times now. 
it's going to fly out. There is something to that. And I, and I, you know, I know when I'm, when I'm a little rusty, when I'm a little out of practice, it does, you get a little stiff, but after, you know, you've, you're, you're kind of warmed up and then, yeah, it can flow and it's, it's a pretty cool feeling. Yeah. 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 What do you, what would you describe? This is a bit of an abstract question. What would you say is the value of working slowly? I, uh, this is a good question. I think there's a lot of values to working slowly. I think, um, I think when you are, when you're doing like plain air painting or, or sort of on site sketching or whatever, um, the value you sit down and you just see a scene, you look at a, a look at a place. I, I paint and sketch a lot of kind of architectural scenes. So I'm in kind of cities. Um, so maybe you're in a, a park or a beautiful square somewhere and you can just sit in that place for an hour and take your time kind of absorbing it, translating it onto your page. But, um, everything that you are experiencing around you, uh, you know, the voices you hear at the cafe or the birds or the way the sunlight is shining, that all kind of goes onto your page either in a conscious or unconscious way. Um, and it just has this life. It's kind of this energy transfer (laughs) right onto the page. Um, and I have not found any other experience like that. Um, I take a lot of photos, uh, but in that situation, you're, you're kind of running around snapping away, um, with a sketch, with a painting, you remember this situation a lot better. It's, it like goes into your memory in a deeper way. Um, I can, I can open sketchbooks that I, that I did years ago and I'm immediately kind of transported back to that time and place. Um, it's just a great sort of, I I don't know. It's a great kind of way to experience, um, a, a place really. Um, so that's, that's, I think the value of slowing down. Yeah. That's kind of a, a, an incredible metaphor for life, I suppose, right? The fact that you're literally able to better remember yeah. the scene that shows you, I think about this a lot, the, the richness of detail around us in our lives is astounding. We just yeah don't see it sometimes because we're so caught up in worries or whatever the next thing is to yeah. do. Yeah, you're rushing around, you're distracted by a million things, yeah. you don't notice it. Um, and you know, in our lives, you don't often give yourself time to just sit yeah. and, and sort of just sit and be, you're always, you're always checking your phone or you're always whatever it is. Um, what happens when you paint it, Do you feel that the thinking like stops and you're able to focus on what you're doing or like what, what's happening internally? <laughs> um, it's a real mix. I, I paint in watercolor and I think, I don't, I don't know if this is true, but I, I, my sense is that watercolor is, you have to think about the process a little bit. Um, you can't erase, you can't yeah. really cover mistakes up too much. So I've always you, struggled a lot with watercolor, by the way. Like, <laughs> and I know just, you do oil paints and that's a very yeah. different experience. Um, but yeah, so there is, I don't know. It just works for my brain that, that you do kind of use this right brain, left brain dynamic. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of planning and a little bit of forethought and a little bit of strategy that goes into it. But at the same time, you are able in the best of times, you're able to be kind of intuitive and Mm -hmm. it flows and things happen that you weren't necessarily aware of. Mm -hmm. And, and it's that combination that's really, that's kind of that sweet spot that you're like, okay, this is something is super cool happening right now. Kind of like you're in the flow. You're in this zone, right? You're in this flow. And I've had this experience many times where, you know, I'll sort of finish a piece and it's like, you're coming out of this state trance a little bit. And I think, oh my God, I'm starving. I'm freezing cold. I can't feel my toes. (laughs) I got to get home. Um, But that was magical. Like, I want to do that again. You know, I, I, you know, I mean, every athletes talk about that. Actors talk about that being on stage, whatever, you know, it's that you're definitely in that place. 
I do know this feeling. I do know this feeling. Um, I guess just to drill down a little more on this, like, can you describe what what is going on in your head? Is it like, are you having thoughts about? Is it like purely just I'm gonna absorb as many details in the environment around me, um, or is it? No, it's not about. For me, it's not about absorbing the details. I think I did that in the beginning, um, you know, kind of doing these very detailed sketches and trying to capture things. You always, you always hear painters and artists talk about, oh, I'm trying to capture a moment. And I'm mm. like, I don't know, capture feels like a, feels like a hunting term. Mm. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, what I'm doing is different. I'm, uh, I think what I'm doing is translating. Um, and other people have talked about this as well. I, I sort of stumbled upon this idea and I thought I was such a genius. And then I read like <laughs> Cezanne or somewhere said exactly like word for word. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, um, it's the idea of you're kind of translating a scene or translating a feeling almost. Um, and then it becomes, you're not worried about every little detail of what you're seeing and depicting, you're more like, well, what is this? How do I feel right now? Or mm -hmm. what is what is this? The, the thing I'm looking at, how does that make me feel? Or how do I want to convey this, this emotion? Um, you know, is it warm? Is it cold? Is it hectic? Is it calming? Is it majestic? Or whatever it is, you know? Um, and then that sort of changes your intention a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you're sort of painting... Um, an emotion or you're painting an intention or you're painting a feeling. Um, it feel, it sounds a little kind of esoteric, but it, not to me, this, it, this sounds great. Yeah. It's, I mean, that to me is where you're, you're like, okay, this is a different level than just sketching a pretty building. This is like, okay, I'm, I'm doing something else here that, that kind of, it elevates what you're doing, but it also gets under the skin of, you know, it gets a little deeper than, than just a, you know, a pretty sketch or something. So that's, that's, yeah. um, that's a lot of my thought process. And I try to, I try to think about that, um, consciously, um, in order to get my brain into that space mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, like what is the, how do I feel when I first saw this scene? Like what, what attracted me to this scene that made me want to paint it? Mm -hmm. What's that emotion or feeling and how do I translate that? I think that's a really powerful compass for all self-expression. Yeah. Um, you put it in so beautifully. But I think, yeah. It's, the, to me, this leads us a little bit back to the conversation about monetization and whatnot. Mm. It's like, I think the reason that doesn't feel good, the reason that can lead to burnout or like, oh my God, what am I doing? It's because you've deviated so far from that original Absolutely, feeling. yeah. Because then you're... Yeah, then you're painting or whatever it is you're doing, writing or whatever it is you're doing. You're doing it for a different goal. You're doing it for someone else. Mm -hmm. You're doing it, you know, in the hopes that it'll be received well um, or you'll get praised for it. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a different, yeah, you're right. It comes from a different place or you're aiming for a different thing. So we talked about Instagram and the way that can influence things, but uh, specifically on the paintings, do you think about like, oh, who, is somebody going to want to buy this? Because you have to, you, you probably have to, I mean, you definitely have to think about how can this be sustainably done, right? And as a painter, you got to make work that people are interested in buying, right? You don't have to. You don't, okay. So, <laughs> I, I mean, guess, if you, yeah, if you want to. I guess if you're, if you're trying to make a living doing it, Yeah, right? if you're trying to make a living, if you, yeah, then I think, you know, maybe you want to, I don't know. Again, it's such a weird balance, right? It you is. Don't, you don't want to. Like, oh, I have to paint something that's going to be commercial, right? Right. What a, what a horrible... I mean, I, this, is, this, for the record, is the reason I have never um, attempted to make any money from the, my paintings. It's <laughs> purely just a thing that I can be yeah. an amateur, amateur, you know, like, uh, for fun yeah. and to express myself. But I have just permanently, at least for now, I mean, we'll see. I guess that's not very permanent. But my, th my thought process this far in my life is I don't want to monetize this ever. Good. I just want it to be my own thing, yeah. you know? And that's great. And but then it gets tricky if it is this thing that you are trying to live off of, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was, you know, I, again, for me, it was a very gradual process. 
and people would occasionally ask me, do you sell your work or, you know, where can I buy prints or whatever? Um, and I was super reluctant to do this partly, you know, I didn't want to introduce too much money too quickly or the idea of money too quickly. Um, and also these paintings were really personal to me. Yeah. And so it's like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to let this go. This is like an incredible memory that I have. Right. Um, how did you let that go? That was hard, but I, I was doing, I was preparing for an exhibit. I, uh, through kind of a friend of a friend I met, um, I, I have a relationship with a gallery here in Paris and, um, and so then they agreed to like, okay, we'll, we'll, you know, have an exhibit of your paintings. They liked my stuff. They liked what they saw. And so then I had to produce a lot more for this specific thing. And I knew that these paintings were going to be for sale. Um, and it just, in my mind, it just was a subtle enough change. Not that I was painting them to be commercial or to be sort of externally interesting, but it was like, okay, this one I'm going to let go. Um, so I, you know, it was still my same process. I would do what I want to do. I would do a personal piece, but I knew kind of at the end of the day, this is going to be hanging on a wall and somebody potentially is going to buy it and take it away. And I had to be okay with that. And I, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see them as your children? Or Absolutely. You yeah, do? they're my babies. Yeah. So and that's so, hard then letting it go. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, um, now I'm, I'm better at it, but, um, but yeah, you want it to go to a good home, right? Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's, if I can meet the potential buyer and it's, you know, it's like, okay, I know, all right, you'll take care of it. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. And I know where it's going to be. I know where like this painting is now in whatever city. It's like, okay, I, I, I kind of have tabs on where these, where my kids are. <laughs> have you ever seen some of your work like in somebody's living room mm -hmm. or yeah. they've invited you over? Yeah. Or, yeah it's what's so, that feeling like? It's incredible. Cause, um, you sort of, it's a little out of sight, out of mind. You know, I, I haven't, maybe I haven't seen this painting for a year or two and I'll walk in and there it is hanging on the wall. Wow. And so then all that emotion comes flooding back and it's like, Oh, I remember, I remember every brushstroke. And there it is. And it's so, it's, it's kind of, it's a cool experience. Do you ever struggle with the thought that, you know, everybody has their own interpretation of the things that you're doing and none of them are your interpretation? Yeah. That's but weird, right? Yeah. It is weird. And I, I don't know if you are at peace with this. I think I am more now, but I battled with this for a long time. It's like, no, I want you to understand <laughs> what I was trying to convey here. And people, people have their own lenses that they're yeah. viewing art or anything in life through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, again, sort of coming from a film background, I'm very aware of like filmmakers who spend so much time and energy producing this thing. And then once you put it out into the world, everybody, interprets it in a different way and they right. read into things that maybe weren't, you know, intentional or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's interesting with, with paintings, kind of what resonates with people and what doesn't. Um, I don't know. It, it's, I don't know. I, I mean, I know, I know how I was feeling when I did a certain piece and I, maybe, maybe there's something I want to convey. Um, if someone else sees that, that, that can be super gratifying. But if not, you know, if they see something else, that's interesting too. So you're pretty detached because it, it seems like there's a, there's a bit of a range, right? And yeah. There's people that are like, no, this has to be, or, yeah. you know, I, I don't care. I do this for me and everybody's gonna have their own interpretation. And it seems like you're further on that side. I think so because I know that like, there is that notion that once you, put it out there in the world, it's kind of not yours anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you post it on social media or hang it on a wall in a gallery or whatever it is, it kind of doesn't belong to you so much. Like the public owns it a little bit and they have their say about what, what they feel about it or, or whatever. So there is a bit of a, you, you have to be a little bit detached, I think. Yeah. But that's, that's something that I, um, I kind of love that idea. For me, paintings are, are kind of a dialogue between um, either me and the, the painting or me and the subject 
or, or more often the painting and the viewer. Um, wow. So it's, uh, can you expand on that idea a little bit? I've never heard that. Although yeah. I find it very intriguing. Yeah. Um, and again, this is, this is another one of my original thoughts that I've since seen other artists talk about. Um, but isn't, so, doesn't that say something yeah. about the process? It does. If you're having the same thoughts other artists it's, have? Yeah, yeah. So it is kind of, it's like, okay. We're, we're There's on, something to this. We're thing. on the right. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, yeah, you're right. I'm not, I'm not a crazy idiot to think this and I'm, you know, I'm not alone. Um, yeah, it's the idea that, uh, I mean, it kind of came out of the idea that, um, you know, I would originally uh, sketch and, and paint very sort of uh, tight details, very kind of controlled paintings. Um, and they were very lifeless to me. They were pretty kind of dead. And so I consciously worked to loosen up my style um, and to be a little bit more expressive and a little bit more impressionistic. And it, the, I enjoyed the process more and I enjoyed the results more. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have come to believe that, um, you leave out details, you leave things a little impressionistic, mm. a little vague. And this is what hooks viewers in. People will, will, they'll read into a painting mm. where you have sort of, I, I heard another artist explain it. Like, it's like friends finishing each other's sentences. So you know, if I, if I leave out some details, if somebody's then looking at that painting, they fill in that detail and that starts to become a bit of a dialogue. It's kind of a conversation. And I love this idea. I love this idea. Um, so then it's a much more engaging, um, experience to look at a, to look at a painting. I love that. Yeah. That, that is so good. I mean, I think there are parallels you can draw with other Absolutely. Mediums. I feel like in film, something I'm constantly thinking about is how do I not spoon feed, yeah. you know, the story to people, guide them along, but, but not talk down to them and yeah. let, let there be enough gaps yeah. for things to be connected and for them to pull their own conclusions. Yeah. It's almost, it's an exciting feeling yeah. when, when it works out that different people will come to different conclusions. It's like, it's, it's, it's that multiplicity or something you yeah know, that and makes it exciting it's just an engaging thing it's like you're setting up this like hey you're it's, you're asking questions rather yeah. than giving answers and that's just something super cool yeah yeah and i think i i mean i sort of was aware of this idea um reading a lot of scripts a lot of film scripts and some are incredibly detailed mm. They, you know, every little action, then the actor walks in and picks up the spoon and stirs the coffee and da, da, da. you know, it's, everything is spelled out. And there are other writers, um, who just tell a great story and you think, oh my God, that that's like poetry. I clearly see what's happening. It's so much more engaging, mm -hmm. but there's less said on the page. So, you know, <laughs> It, would you give this as advice to somebody who's like, how do I do, you know, how do I make more compelling work? Is it say <laughs> less, say just the bare minimum that you have to say? Is that oversimplifying things a little bit? It's a little, how do you translate this into like <clears throat> action? Like a practical. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's almost ironic, right? Because yeah. it's imp it, the, what we're describing here is very impractical in a sense because it's so difficult to find that line you have to yeah. you have to feel it out yeah but yeah. even thinking about it i think changes the work that you do i mean when you said yeah. you were trying to loosen up your work i so relate to that it's like oh whoa there's another level of complexity that you unlock when you when you approach things that way it yeah. feels like yeah and i think and again I, I i do teach a lot of workshops and i hear from a lot of students how do i how do i loosen up how do i not you know, get too concentrated and focused in on all these details. How do I, you know, help me with that problem. And so, um, yeah, that's something that I do talk about. Um, you know, there are practical things you can do, use a bigger paintbrush, um, you know, be more squiggly with your pencil line. Um, you know, don't, don't hold your tools. So like <laughs> in a death grip or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, maybe concentrate your, your details and your contrasts in one part of the painting and the rest of it, you can, 
you can afford to be a little um, more sort of out of focus with. Um, that just makes it just makes more a more interesting painting. Um, those are kind of practical things, but yeah, I think talking like philosophically about it, um, so, for some people that works and you get for me it. that works. I mean, right? this is, this is, I love these <laughs> kinds of conversations, you know, but then I think I, I remember not everybody is so out there. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I tend to talk this way sometimes and yet then you kind of look around and you see students just absolutely the like glazed over look like, <laughs> is it blue or is it red? Like, give me, like help me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know. You kind of, you just have to say a bunch of things and maybe something will hit with somebody. Yeah. Something maybe maybe it's just part of the journey, right? Yeah. You just like t you have to start somewhere and maybe yeah. you're a little bit rigid and you just realize, okay, I'll just yeah. work on this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. One question I had for you that I find interesting because every artist seems to give a little bit of a different answer is, um, how do you know when you're done? Like, <laughs> classic age old question. Yeah. But it is a little bit, for me, it's interesting to always ask that because my answer to that has changed over time. Hmm. And sometimes I find in the work that I do, I get so zeroed in on things that later on didn't have any importance hmm. or I will casually do something that ends up being very significant. Yeah. And I, I don't seem to have um, an ability to perfectly predict all the time. And so sometimes I'll look back on my work and I'm like, I could have ended it there or I could have worked on it more or whatever, you know? Yeah. So I'm wondering kind of what your thoughts are on this. Yeah. It's, it's a tricky one. And I think, um, I, I don't think there's any right answer. And that's kind of the cool thing is that each painting you do is going to be a, a totally different, unique experience. Right. And so your approach might be, might change. Um, I kind of, I feel like it's a, it's a taste thing that develops over a long time and it comes from ruining a lot of paintings by going too far. I, I think of it like there's a finish line and you're not, you're not in a race where you're going to blow through the finish line. You have to stop on that line. You have to slow down and stop right on that line. And if you go one step beyond that, you might've just ruined your painting. You know, you make one touch too much or you there's something you just go ah that was it uh, yeah i shouldn't have done that yeah um, but this is very dependent on the medium as well right i think watercolor in right. particular is yeah like you're this. right you're right watercolor and like pen and ink sketching you know you can go too far and you can't undo that um if you're drawing digitally if you're if you're painting in oils you can you can finesse and yeah. scrape off we'll and do the next redo. layer. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and you can do a fair amount of that in watercolor as well. But, but I've sort of, for me, uh, well, yeah, the simple answer is it comes from ruining a lot of paintings and then realizing, okay, I, sh I need to stop before I'm ready. Um, what I do often is I'll get a, I'll get a piece, you know, where I feel like it's 98% there. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably missing something, but I, I can't quite identify it because I've been staring at it for two hours. So I'll put it away. I'll, I'll put it away overnight usually, um, and then come back to it the next day and look at it. And my first impression, I think I know exactly what it needs. And then it's, it's usually like a tiny little touch and then I, okay, I'm now I'm done. I'm done. What do you think that is? What, why? I've given this advice as well with an edit. You think like you're stuck or whatever. It's late at night. You've been going for a bunch of hours. Yeah. Just go to sleep and yeah. then look at it again. What, what is that about taking a break that refreshes the eye of the artist? Well, I think it's, you literally need a rest. You need perspective away from it. Cause you're, you're so focused in on whatever you're doing that you get this tunnel vision mm -hmm. and you, you kind of lose perspective. And so you need to, step away. Um, I was just reading John Cleese's book on creativity. Okay. It's this skinny little book, but, um, he talks about this, uh, about the writing process. He says, basically the idea is that your unconscious keeps working on it hmm. when, as you've stepped away, you know, overnight, whatever else you're doing, part of your brain is still working on this issue. And then when you come back to it, 
you know the answer. Yeah. Um, I think there's actually a, a term for it's like a, a system or something. I mean, I'm, I'm not, the expert <laughs> on this, but I read a book called rest um, okay. where the author talks about uh, the default mode network, I think is what it's called. Wow. And All it's right. like this part of your brain that is activated when you go off and do other stuff. Like, oh, I love that. Go on a walk, go to go yeah. take a trip, whatever. It's almost like your brain takes all the information it has and tries different combinations or I whatever in the background. And then when you come back, that's how you have the sudden new yeah. perspective or new idea that that unlocks the thing that you were stuck on. I love that. There is something just incredibly powerful, I think, of harnessing that. Yeah. And the power of time. Yeah. You know? You just know like that's a tool you have. Like you don't have to be grinding away at whatever it is you're doing until it's perfect and done. Yeah. It's like, no, you have a tool, which is to stop <laughs> and walk away right. and go have a coffee and, um, you know, come back to it tomorrow or the next week or whenever. Right. And suddenly you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really valuable. Yeah. I often, I also think of it like, okay, that was my practical, my esoteric answer yes, is um, <laughs> bring, bring me the esoteric answers. <laughs> this is my poetic, uh, um, thing. I, I, I think I'm very, I personify everything. And so these paintings to me are, as I'm doing it, it's, it's literally a relationship and I ha sometimes I'm fighting and sometimes I'm wow. like, it's this dance or whatever. But, um, I, this is a living thing that's like coming to life. Um, and, uh, and it starts to, I, again, someone else said it's like, once it starts singing on its own, you know, you're getting close. And I, I had this image a bunch of years ago that I feel like when you're approaching that finish line, it's like this little voice is whispering, mm. stop enough, stop. And, and you're kind of half aware of it, but you keep going, you keep going. And it's just, it's always going to whisper. Uh, and if you go too far, it just says, yeah, see too much. But, um, wow. but if you, if you can hear that and the next time maybe you'll, you'll recognize that little voice. And I think of it as this, I mean, all right, here we go. I think of it as this very rare bird in the forest and you don't know necessarily what what it sounds like you haven't heard it yet but you're you're out there taking a hike or whatever and you hear this very faint little bird with its particular type of call and once you've heard it the next time you'll be able to recognize it and so when i'm finishing a painting i'm listening for that little particular voice mm -hmm. and I, and then once you start to listen you're like oh there it is okay i can hear it here i go i'm almost done and so that for me is like definitely part of the process that I'm yeah. like, all right, I'm going to listen to what this painting is saying to me. Cause it's not just about me driving home something. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it is such a, I took a few classes like art classes in high school. Mm -hmm. So I did a little bit of pottery. I did some painting classes and they don't explain this like, I, I would have loved, and maybe it's because <laughs> I have this kind of brain that loves the esoteric I think if, like, a, if a high school teacher started talking like this, they might like call in the loony police. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unfortunate because there's such a beautiful lesson to take away from that, which is like, th that's the value of listening. Yeah, that's... I agree. I agree. And I really, this is something that like you can read kind of a hundred different books about the process or how to mix paints or, or whatever it is. But it's, it's these little things that often because I, I'm always thinking about this kind of stuff as I'm painting or as I'm thinking about painting or whatever. And so I'm always coming up with analogies mm -hmm. and, and then I'll, once I come up with an idea, I think that's exactly it. It's a little bird in a forest. Um, and then I'll, you know, next week I'll read, some famous quote by Degas or something. And he'll talk about a little bird in a forest or whatever it is. But I think like you said before, it's like, okay, I, you know, I'm on the right track. If other people yeah. have sort of stumbled upon this idea, I'm sensing a theme here though. If you don't mind me asking, are, do you feel a, like a struggle where you would like to be original and you find it's very difficult <laughs> in the, in the world of art? Since... No, I, you know, I think, um, I certainly, well, put you know, a premium is... on originality and, 
and and it's uh and and at the same time what's original right because everything's yeah. been done it feels like well you know i again i i try to be kind of zen about it you want to be original i think especially in this sort of day and age and this for i don't know for the last hundred years or whatever there's especially in visual arts the emphasis is being like an original auteur you know this was not always the case through the history of humanity but for whatever reasons here we are so yeah maybe the, because society became more individualistic perhaps yeah probably that's just a wild theory that's you know probably a huge part of it yeah but um but yeah so you want to be original you want to have a voice everyone talks about having a, vo- a unique voice um, but at the same time i do really feel that i am part of a larger tradition mm. um there are countless souls <laughs> who, you know, looking back through history, who've done exactly what I'm doing or very similar things to what I'm doing. And that, and I'm sort of one of the latest in this line. And I love this idea. And so if, if somebody a hundred years ago had the same thought, it's like, it's sort of rippled through this collective unconscious. And now it's, I have this thought. I, I love this idea. Mm. And for me, it's, You know, I can either beat myself up for not being original or I can say, no, 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 I'm actually tapping into this larger tradition that is pretty damn cool. So I kind of love that idea. Yeah. 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 I think that's good. That's healthy. (laughs) That's healthy because I think it's a lot of pressure to try to do super like what what, what even does original mean? Right. I've heard it more so be described as new combinations of the same things. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and it makes it it makes self-expression a little bit more accessible too, right? Because you're you're not like I need to be struck by lightning, you know, and have this... right. Yeah, I need to do something that no one has ever seen before. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's. I will say that there is a feeling of excitement when it feels like I'm doing something that's that's fresh. And I don't yeah. know how to describe that. Yeah. In in too many other terms, other than. Ooh, I haven't seen this before. Or it feels like I'm doing something yeah. that feels a little bit um, unique, even compared yeah. to my own other work. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, but it, you know, and it's going to be because it's you are creating something. It's coming through you, and so it's going to have this unique aspect yeah. about it, right? It's yeah. you know, it's like a fingerprint. It's your particular handwriting or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's super, super cool. How, how much time do you have a cap in the amount of time that you can spend in a day painting? Like, do you burn out after a while or can you do all day long? I probably could do all day long. I, I tend to be a little bit more kind of deliberate about my pacing. I can okay. kind of dive in for an hour or two and be very intense about it, but I do need to come out and, and sort of step away for a minute. So the intensity, Um, that intense mode can't be an all day thing. I, you know, it probably could. I don't know if I found that with watercolor painting yet. I definitely did that with storyboarding. I could sort of, you go for 12 hours at a stretch and you're just in it. Um, I don't know. Painting for me, it doesn't, it feels a little bit more gentle of a process. I can definitely kind of get into those intense, into that intense frame of mind, but it's, you know, maybe for an hour or two. So to go from such intensity to a much gentler process, as you, as you said, is there any guilt like <laughs> oh, I should be working harder or like, I don't know, spending more time doing this, you know, cause we have, I feel I certainly I'll take again, personal responsibility. I think this is also fairly, um, present in society at large, but we have some ass backward ideas. Oh, yeah. Like this around, work ethic. Yeah. yeah. Like, Oh, busyness equals I'm doing more work and like, yeah. this feels good. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but it, obviously <clears throat> the same laws of physics don't apply in the yeah. creative yeah. world. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's, that is a struggle and that is, um, you do kind of feel this, this guilt, um, whether it's internal or coming from society that, you know, I should be working hard all the time. You do, you do feel that. Yeah. In order to earn something, you know, but then it's like, hang on, this is, that's not what this process wants or what it needs. Um, and I have to be okay with kind of loosening up on the reins a little bit and being like, no, I mean, 
again, especially with watercolor, it's, it's a more gentle yeah. process. It does, it's got a pace to it, um, that you kind of have to work with. Yeah. Um, where do you think those thoughts do come from? Like, do you think it's an internal <laughs> thing or do you think it's from society, which is sort of a vague thing to say? Right? No, I, it's I don't like it. I, I definitely internally cringe sometimes when I'm like, because of society, because it feels almost like a cliche to say that. Right. And, and it's, I'm not saying it's not true, yeah. but it's vague. Like, what it's are we vague. talking about I mean, right we can now? point to like this very sort of <laughs> Northern European Protestant work ethic, right. um, as opposed to like, uh, you know, a more relaxed, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, wherever you want it to come from. I know that, um, I, I grew up in a family that was a little bit on the, on the scale of you got to work hard to earn yeah. any sort of enjoyment in life. Yeah. Um, and that can be that can be a good thing. It can drive you to, to do good things, but it can also it, be damaging. It can be super damaging. And you're like, really, yeah. do I really have to earn yeah. every little, come on. Can I just, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So. I feel like I've hit a ceiling where this kind of, I'm going to bust my ass, you know, and like do 1 million projects and try and bust through. Right. It, it's not taking me where I, where I want to go anymore. Hmm. And I feel that I need to stop getting so hung up on, am I wasting my time right now? Yeah. This is too slow. There's, there's, this is why I asked you about the, the value of going slower. It's, yeah. it's an idea I'm exploring a lot right now because I think approaching things that way can unlock things that can't be accessed when you're rushing. I agree. Uh, but it's difficult because I'm, obsessed with time. I'm, I am really <laughs> obsessed with how much time I have left or whatever. And yeah. I know that's, it sounds silly to say that as someone in their twenties. Right. But you know, you just don't know. And I don't know where exactly this urgency comes from, but I'm, I'm finding that I've got to, I, I need to develop more of those habits that help me be um, patient and slow down when I'm doing things or mm -hmm. creating mm -hmm. because um, again, it unlocks this new level yeah. of stuff, you know, and yeah. in a way doing one project that way feels more valuable in many ways than like 12 that were just yeah shot yeah. out, you know, totally. Yeah. It's the difference between going deep on one thing, you know, yeah. really diving into something Yeah, as opposed to skimming across the surface of a million different things. Yeah. So um, you don't feel that sense of urgency that I feel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely have in my life. And I think I'm, I'm trying to be in a place where I, you know, concentrate on yeah. one thing at a time. And, but then, I mean, I feel guilty of all the things I'm not doing, right? Like, you know, you sort of give yourself all these projects. So I want to, I want to do another book. I want to, yeah you know, make a video about something. I want to have a, another course about this, that, and the other. I want to do some amazing exhibit. Um, you know, I want to explore some other country and yeah. paint, paint the hell out of it. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. There's... Yeah. I think that's like a, a fairly, gosh, can we end on a slightly more positive <laughs> note? <laughs> let's see here. We'll find, yeah, let's, uh, we'll <laughs> find some positive. You know, we live in an increasingly digital world. And a lot of what you do is digital too, right? Like you share a lot of your work on, yeah. but really your art is physical. Yeah. I, I can only imagine that's a very intentional decision. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much you've actually dabbled in digitally doing things. I've, well, I, for 20 plus years, I've drawn digitally yeah. doing storyboards yeah. and, and kind of um, larger illustrations. Um, mainly storyboard, like black and white storyboards, but yeah. that's a hundred percent digital. Um, okay. and that was kind of a, um, it just, it was a more efficient way to draw. Right. Um, just because of the nature of that sort of work, you're always revising, you're always changing. Oh. And, and so that's what I did. Um, but yeah, you're right. It was, um, you know, coming to Paris, I knew I wanted to sketch, um, and I knew I wanted to do something completely the other end of the spectrum from, from digital. I wanted to use like rough paper. I wanted, you know, old fountain pens and, you know, paint brushes and yeah. just real kind of natural materials. Um, and so 
um, yeah, for me, it was very, uh, a very intentional decision. And, and I just kind of dive into that mm. aspect of it. So the reason you go physical in a very digital and increasingly digital world is the tactile. I element. love the tactile experience and it, and for me, it's part of that whole, like slowing down and yeah. experiencing time differently. And, um, you know, having a cup of coffee or, or whatever it is, but it's all, you know, it's the, it's not just an image. It's not just a visual image. It's, it's a tactile experience. It's a sensory experience. Um, yeah. and all, yeah, that I can't, I can't get that digitally. Yeah. You can make a pretty picture, but you miss all the, you miss the smell and the feel and the, you miss all that. I completely agree. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was actually in the height of the pandemic that I discovered analog photography, mm. which for wow. me is exactly the same thing. It was like kind of confusing in my brain. I was like, wow, things are getting more and more digital and I'm going backwards <laughs> in time. Like I want to use these cameras from the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Um, but it was exactly that. It was like, I need, it's almost like things are too fast. They're too efficient. They're too convenient. Yeah. Talk about privilege, you know, to say this <laughs> compared to previous generations, but there is something, there's yeah. something going on. Like, yeah. I don't know if, if, um, if more convenience and more speed is always better. Right. Well, Especially for creative yeah. self-expression. You know? Yeah, I agree. I, and I, I have a friend, a good friend in LA that takes physical photographs um, with film and there's something about that process i grew up with a with a film camera still camera and there's something about that that it teaches your eye like every image is kind of precious mm -hmm. you know you're not you're not with your phone snapping 100 pictures every hour you're like hang on i got a roll of 36 <laughs> exposures i gotta make sure i'm i'm actually thinking about you know the composition and you know, maybe I'll wait for the light to, to change just a little bit, or, yeah. you know, you're a little bit more intentional about it. I mean, I, I get a little bit, um, this is where you might think I'm a little bit out there because there's like a spiritual element to this for me, the imperfections that come out in the images, yeah. you know, like a scratch or a burn or whatever. It, it feels like to me, it feels like messages from God, not, and I'd saying that not in a religious sense, like. Yeah. I, I use the word God more as like a synonym for like the universe or like yeah. whatever that bigger thing is that connects all of us, Sure, which is an assumption. You know, I think there's probably people out there that, I mean, there's definitely people out there that don't agree with that, but it's something I believe yeah. deeply. And when those things come out like that, it, there is something so special about it. Yeah. It's impossible to, well, it's describe. kind of like, I mean, this, these are sort of things we're touching on that it's like the imperfections or the things you can't control or the, you know, it's, it's those little things that maybe make a piece more interesting, a photograph or a painting, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not in control all the time. Yeah. And these little imperfections are reminders that there is, there's another element to it whatever you want to call it. It's like, it's better to kind of relinquish some of that control. And that's part of what makes this unique. You know, yeah. your, your photograph with a little piece of hair or whatever it is. Yeah. No, it's like, no, that's, that's actually cool. And, and you wouldn't have done that. Like if you'd done that digitally, you could clean it up or you wouldn't do it in the first place yeah. and it would be perfect. Um, but it might not be as interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Something about what you were just saying, um, brought back this analogy or this image, I guess, in my mind that I, of, of like how I think about life where, you know, if you're on a train, it doesn't feel accurate to say you're the conductor. I, I don't, because there, there's a lot you cannot control. It also doesn't fully feel accurate to say you're just a passenger. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're a passenger, like looking out the window and paying attention and like, you you can do something about that in your little cabin if that makes sense <laughs> i don't know how to it's an incomplete analogy but yeah yeah it does feel like okay yeah there's a lot you cannot control mm -hmm. but there's still like an energy you can bring to the things that you do 
Yeah. You know, that, that is why I'm so attracted to art and self-expression. Yeah. It's like, okay, I get the, I get the chance to practice channeling attention towards things. Yeah. And seeing what that brings. It doesn't really yeah. change the trajectory of the train. <laughs> no, but I think that that kind of taps into it, that it's, it is self-expression. It is this unique vision or this voice. Um, and you are, you are doing, you've chosen whatever medium you've chosen to mm -hmm. express yourself with, but there is another element and it's like the medium also has its own ideas mm -hmm. and the environment that you're in has something to say. Um, and all those things are coming together and, and you are part of that. Maybe you're mostly in control of that, but you're not, there's other voices that are like contributing. Um, well, I mean, I don't know. This is where it gets a little bit brainy and I don't want it to get too intellectual, but there are a lot of factors like where I was born my yeah. background, the people I've interacted with, whatever that have an influence, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. that I cannot calculate. Sure. But in general, just like the, the, yeah, the, the inexplicable colliding of different factors yeah. Yeah. feels magical. And I kind of want to stick with that versus, uh, Oh, this is just a series of chemical reactions or whatever the more scientific. No, I, yeah, no, I get it. I, yeah. And I feel like with my paintings, it's very much kind of a spiritual pursuit or a, you know, that's, that's when they, that's when they're the best or that's when I feel yeah. the most fulfilled is that you are kind of inviting in these other, voices or these other elements yeah. that, that, um, you don't, I mean, maybe you're not consciously aware of, maybe you yeah. don't, you know, I don't know. And I, I, I mean, it's probably true for every, uh, medium, whatever you, whatever you choose, however you choose to express yourself. But I think for me with watercolor, it is like, you know, the humidity of the day has a lot of effect on wow. how a painting turns out. That is amazing. <laughs> so, you That's know, brilliant. literally every day you could paint the same thing. It's going to be different just because of the temperature or the humidity. That is incredible to me. <laughs> I had never had that thought, but it's true. You're painting outside. You're painting outside and you're using water and pigment and you're using paper, like cotton paper that's super absorbent. Yeah. And so if it's a hot, dry summer day, paints are going to dry quicker. Things are going to flow differently. Yeah. If I'm painting on like a kind of a damp cold day, yeah. nothing's going to dry. It's going to just take forever. It's going to, and that's going to affect how the paints behave, the paper behaves. Uh, and that's sort of, I mean, that's the most obvious kind of outside influence mm -hmm. but i also think there's there's more there's sort of like i don't know the vibe of the day the mm -hmm. mood of the day um if i'm using a different i had an experience where i painted a, a a larger piece on a on handmade paper i'd never used this kind of paper before mm. and i felt like i was arguing with this paper wow. for hours i'm like wow this is this is weird i it's I mean, it's a little uncomfortable, but I'm okay with having this argument. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, it wasn't a fight, but it was like, wow, that's a different experience. And uh, other, other times paper is just like, like a great conversation or, you know, I, I don't know. I think about, you know, like it's like music, you know, um, it's like playing in a, a jazz band with different musicians. Um, sometimes you're, Sometimes it's a great conversation. Sometimes it's a little bit of a competition. Sometimes yeah. it's a struggle. Um, well, I think that's so fascinating to me because a lot of what you do, my interpretation is a lot of what you do is like capturing the energy of places. I don't know if you agree with that. I know? Yes, absolutely. I agree. And, with that. Yeah. and so for literally the, the energy of like the humidity or the heat of the day or yeah. whatever to yeah. actually be having an influence on the image that you're creating producing yeah. yeah is um is a really bizarrely clear <laughs> link <laughs> between like the energy of the world around us i think and yeah what we make you know yeah, yeah. so 
Anyway, on that note, <laughs> we found a more positive there we spot. There we, we found it. There's our, there's our little <laughs> voice whispering that we're done. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciated uh, this conversation and um, the thoughts that you shared. Wow. So this is where the magic happens. <laughs> yeah, this is where the magic happens. How long have you been working here for? Um, I've had this for three years, four years, maybe. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Is all of this yours? No. No. Some of it is mine. Uh, the red awnings are mine. The, the black one is mine. But okay. um, most of these are, are friends of mine. I really wanted to kind wow. of surround myself with art of friends. This is a beautiful mirror. My goodness. I know. That was, are that you was kidding good. me? It's pretty great. It feels so classically yeah. Parisian. That was a conversation with Alex Hilkertz. I'll leave links to his work in the description or show notes. And if you enjoyed this episode or this podcast in general, one of the best ways you can support my work right now is simply by sharing it. Word of mouth is incredible and it's free. I think you can also rate the podcast with whatever platform you use to listen to it. So I think that helps as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you.